I'd like to talk about Langton's Ant, which is one of the simple mathematical machines that can be used to do computation, um, a bit like the Turing machine or Conway's Game of Life mathematical models that uh, people have used to make computers out of. Um, it's a 2D automaton, hence I have this 2D grid here, which um, normally is a reversi board, and I've got this meeple here to represent the ant. And what the ant does is, will, depending on the colour of the square that it's sitting on, turn left or right. So I'm going to say um, left is white, right is black. Then it always moves forward one square and flips the square that it was just on. So this guy here, facing that way, will turn left, move forward one, and flip that square. Left again, because it's white again. White again. Again. Yeah. And finally we're on a black one, so this is going to turn right. Flip that. All fingers and thumbs at the moment. Left again, white, etc. etc. And um, this starts off looking fairly symmetrical uh, and quickly descends into chaos. The behaviour of it is quite interesting um, if you're starting from a blank field like I just did. Um, I will probably link to a video by the number file people who do a much better job of explaining this. But what I'm particularly interested in is what happens if you set up the board in advance. So instead of starting from a blank grid, we make this line here. And if the ant was to enter here, turning right because of the black one, left and left again, I'll do both of those at once, right and right again, left and left again, and what you should see is that the ant is following this line. So by making that line of black squares we made a line for it to follow. Um, and you can do more complex patterns which will cause it to follow a line and then turn um, and come out wherever you want. But uh, what's really cool is that um, some people at the University of Chile figured out that they could make logic gates out of this. So this is one of their knot gates, and as the ant comes in on the left here, it will follow around all of these squares and read these two up the top, which is an input, and produce the inverted version on the bottom. So these two are both white, these two will both be black, and vice versa. And the ant then exits on the right to the next gate. There could be a long wire here, like I've just made there. Um, this is an AND gate. This one has two inputs and the logical AND of those ends up down here and then the AND exits on the right again and of course you can chain these together so you can chain these so the AND executes this one then this one and you could make another copy of this and chain the um, output of this to the input of this they're at slightly different scales unfortunately so they don't quite match up but there's your AND gate and with AND gates and NOT gates you've got everything you need to make a computer with so Langton's Ant can be used to do universal computation in a fairly simple manner, unlike Rule 110, which is very, very difficult to understand. So the reason I'm particularly interested in this is that you can do a math sorry, mechanical version of this quite simply. Um, this is toolboard, the kind of thing that you hang up in your garage and uh, put hooks on to hang your tools on. And there's bits of laser gut acrylic, these little star shaped pieces rotate left and right and they're the state of the cells in this version. The round pieces don't move and there's no difference between the black pieces and the red pieces, I just happen to have that colour of acrylic. I did try to make little windows in here and uh, make them so they go over a black square or a, a white bit of paper there but that doesn't really work all that well so I think we can ignore that. The ant itself is made up of one of these. This is a, a hex bug, appropriately enough. Uh, it's a children's toy, it's a bristle bot, and this has just got a vibrating motor in and these bristles which cause it to generally move forward. Um, the bristles, not very well there. Um, these normally run in channels. Uh, this other one I've got here has got a little peg glued to the bottom of it, and that peg will fit into the spaces in between these pieces of acrylic here the blue tack is just to give it some extra weight. So what I'm going to try and do, instead of starting with a blank 
um, field like this. I'm going to try and set this up so that the amp goes this way and turns a corner and exits roughly here. Let's say we start there. Two, three, four, five. Just want five traces before I run it. And those two and those two. And we should, I think, end up here if everything works. It doesn't always. However, looking good today. Yes, and we're out. Now, one of the very interesting things about Langton's amp is that it's reversible. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this amp around and send it back in the way it came, and I'm hoping it'll come out here again. Slowly, yep. Right. Now, not only did it come out where it went in the first time, um, it should also have reset the entire board to the state that it was in before, before I put the ant in for the first time. So if I send it back the other way, it will do this forever. And that could be potentially very useful for a computer. Um, normally these um, gates that here are one-shot things. As the, the ant moves through here, it's going to disrupt all that pattern and corrupt it completely. If you were able to turn the ant round and send it back the other way, it would reset this back to its original configuration and then you'd be able to change the input to something else potentially and run it again. Um, so that could be a potentially useful shortcut if you're trying to make a universal computer this way. Um, obviously I don't have enough cells on here to do even the knock gate unfortunately. Um, this is still actually one of the most successful computers I've ever made, mechanical ones anyway. Um, because it's it's so much closer to actually having working and and nor gates, and you can do these in maybe 30 cycles, and each cycle takes less than a second. Um, if it were possible somehow to shrink all this down and shrink the the amp down as well, um, you could potentially make a, a computer that could almost do something useful out of this. So anyway, there is mechanical Langton's amp.